In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the latest generation Magic Keyboard has to offer on the new iPad Pros. So you can see for yourself if it's truly worth picking up or if you already picked it up, here are some interesting things it could do in today's video of tips and tricks and hidden features and more. Let's begin. Okay, before I start, timestamps and everything else will be in the video description down below. So if you'd like to skip around, feel free to do so. But we are going to start from the very beginning and work our way up to the more complex stuff to make sure we're all on the same page. So first thing first, there is finally a lock escape key, which allows you to lock your tablet just like this. And if you like to unlock it, you could tap the space bar and tap space bar again. This will toggle face ID to just unlock just like a witness right then and there. So with the trackpad here, you could access your control center by quickly allowing it to highlight your battery and Wi-Fi bar and tap once on your trackpad. and It will give you control center right here. Everything is easy to access. Notifications, opposite corner over here. You click on where, type, where your time and date is. It will automatically bring down control center. You could tap space to go back and not control center, I'm sorry, notification menu. And if you draw, like to access your notification drop down menu from the center right here, if you keep scrolling up, it also bring down your drop down notification menu just like that. Now, if you like to go back, you can either tap the space bar like you witnessed me do right there to go back to your home menu, or you can use three fingers and then just slide up on the trackpad. This works on apps too. So we launched the music app. We decided to go back home. Boom, three finger up. Now from the home page, if you want to have access to your spotlight without scrolling down, you can just use two fingers and then slide down. Here's your spotlight search. You could type in anything you're trying to search up, apps, data, and etc. So the beauty of multitasking with the iPad Pro. This little track bar right here, if you go down and go down again, you have the ability to open up more windows you can slide like this to quickly enter split screen view and then everything here is identical to the multitask split view that we've been exposed to throughout the years but instead of using your trackpad to like go down and continue going down to have access to your dock if you like to access it with a command key just hold down command option and d this will also bring up your docks you can find many of these shortcuts if you long hold on the command key a little window will pop up showing you some of them because if you like to change the size on certain apps as an example let's go hop back into safari holding down command plus or negative will allow you to quickly adjust the text size on the app you're using so negative for zoom out and plus zoom in only some apps will support this you may notice everything else you're going to have to manually adjust in your iPad settings if you like to adjust the text size. Now, if you like to activate app switcher from the keyboard magic mouse with three fingers from the very bottom, you hold up and this will quickly launch the multitask window. And if we go ahead and select an app like YouTube as an example, again, with three fingers, you're just going to slide left or right. This will allow you to jump between previously open apps. So if we go back in Safari, of course, two fingers split open. You could zoom in or zoom out. Oh, this one's not letting me, but if I click on like an image right here, maybe a car, I could zoom in just like you would on a touchscreen. On YouTube, if you do the pinch and zoom thing, instead of zooming in, it'll actually allow you to go from full screen or minimalistic screen or minimum screen, I should say. So yeah, you can also utilize that here. Now I did show you by long holding command, it will actually show you the shortcut key. If you do it on an app, each command will show you a different command. So this is what we have to work with on YouTube. But if we go on Safari as an example and hold down the command key, it's gonna show us the shortcuts for Safari. It changes depending on the app that you're using. But another one of my most commonly used commands I found myself using the most is command H, which will take you home and command tab will allow you to quickly switch between different apps. But if you don't like some of these shortcuts to be right here and available, you can always just tap Q to close them. So you highlight the app you want to close. So Safari, tapping Q and it's gone. And let's say for example, we are on YouTube, but we need to do something that involves spotlight. By holding command and the space key, this will always bring up your spotlight search. And yes, you could do mass here as well. That's how you get a calculator working on an iPad Pro. And if you want quick emoji access, tap on the globe. 
your emoji will immediately pop up once you're like in a text field to enter text with the keyboard tap emoji it'll launch it now exiting off of that another cool one is globe and s this will launch siri now i program siri to only talk to me with text so if i say hi there's Siri right there. If you like to enable it so Siri can actually talk, like you type to Siri instead of verbally talk to it, just go into your iPad settings and you'll find it in accessibility. Sorry, I was working on something earlier. Scroll down in the accessibility tab and scroll down until you find Siri right here. And then where it says type to Siri, enable this. So this way you don't have to verbally talk to Siri, especially if you're in a public place working. So when it comes to commonly asked questions about the Magic Keyboard is uh, the brightness. Yes, you do have somewhat of a function row right here, which allows me to quickly adjust the brightness of my iPad on the go like this. But what's the keyboard brightness? Unfortunately, to have access to this, you still have to go into your settings and you'll find it in the general tab. And then you'll just go have to go into keyboard hardware. Where is it? Oh, right here. Keyboard and then keyboard hardware. Here it is. And right now, since this is a pretty bright room, but I'm going to turn off this light real quick to demonstrate. There we go. Our keyboard just immediately illuminated. And this is where you could go ahead and adjust the brightness. By default, mine was over here. So I really don't care about battery life. I'm at home right now. It's plugged in. As you saw, a little port in the intro still exists. I'm able to charge my iPad as I'm using it and freeing up the other USB-C port for data purposes. So that's how you could adjust the brightness on your keyboard. Now, other cool things you could do here in a keyboard hardware is key modifications. If you like to customize some of these, you have full modification abilities. But now that we have the escape key that actually does allow us to lock our tablet, uh, there's really no need to customize it. But if there's a preference of something you want to do, you have full freedom to do so right here. Now, you may have noticed my cursor is highlighted white. I think why it's appropriate since everything is usually like this neutral, very grayish, bluish tone. If you like to change this, you'll find it in the accessibility section right here. You need to have the Magic Keyboard connected to have access to this because you'll see a new pointer control option. By clicking here, you could either increase the contrast and make it really stand out, or you could change the color entirely if you wanted blue, green, red. And you can change the thickness of the uh, air, the pointer as well. How width do you want that color to be? But I like to keep it on white. Best results, experiment and see which one you prefer or add some personality to it. You can also change the size of the cursor if you want. And cursor animation, if you don't like it, how it wraps over like the control center over here, in order for you to get control center access, you know, it does that cool animation right here. If you don't, you're not a huge fan of that, you just like to keep it like this at all times just disable pointer animation and that's how you can solve that and then lastly down here of course you have your scroll speed if you like to increase it or decrease it total freedom to do so now back in the general tab if we go into trackpad there's something else i want to show you see where it says tap to click with tap enabled you know how now we have to click to like cause something to happen if you enable this a light tap will actually do it so if we go get out of here and I want to gently tap on Safari, it opens it. So if you don't like to tap feedback, you can still use it. Just now you could just lightly do that and it'll actually toggle as a click command. So that's what tap to click. And I kind of like it. Experiment with it. I recommend leaving it on though. And the haptic feedback. If you're not a huge fan how the enhanced haptic feedback feels like on the Magic Keyboard, you can actually disable it. So it's much more aggressive when it's on. But when you turn it off, you really, uh, you still notice it, but it's just not as aggressive. It's definitely something to experiment. I personally enjoy leaving that on. Secondary click. What this allows you to do is basically force press what Apple used to allow us to do. So notice right here, if I click with two fingers, it's just going to bring up this menu. So if I click in two fingers, it allows you to quickly have access to these uh, little shortcuts on the app. You can still long hold over it though, but if you click with two, it's instant. That's what that two finger secondary click does. For some bonuses, you could actually use this stand as like a shade, just like this. So if there's like a lot of sunlight shining through here, you can just flip your iPad like this and we'll provide some shade appropriate when you're working outdoors or indoors and there's just a lot of glare coming in and you don't have like the nano texture display. You can just flip it like so. 
Another thing I've seen a lot of people do, which is not really recommended, but if you have the Apple Pencil, you can actually tilt it like this to the point where you could actually use this to like draw. So here we are using Procreate. By doing this, I could like comfortably just scribble. It's a cool life hack if you need it. It's like note taking or sketching though, because you can also like take some good notes right here as well, as it's pretty comfortable on the palm. And then next thing I like to show you is you have full freedom to control your iPad if you're using Sidecard with the original OS. So right now, this is iPad OS, of course, and I'm using the same cursor on my laptop to control my iPad and vice versa, because I could also do the same thing with the Magic Keyboard on the iPad Pro. I could control everything on my Mac by just utilizing its existing keyboard. And yes, it also supports typing too. So I could literally type from the iPad and vice versa. Just unfortunately, when you're using Sidecar like I'm using right now, I am unable to uh, continue using the Magic Keyboard on the uh, MacBook Pro. Just give me a heads up. But I could easily utilize the keyboard on my Mac to mirror my extended display of the iPad Pro. And there we have it, folks. Those are all the amazing things that the latest generation Magic Keyboard can do. If you just picked up the iPad Pro, I highly recommend watching this video over here. So I show you some more additional settings you could adjust on your iPad Pro to really get the most out of that amazing device. My name was Eddie. Thank you so much for watching.